Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Mike Bird, and this is season two of The Sticky Side. I'm joined by Mr. Rob Chismark. What's going on, Rob? Hey, Mike, how are you? <laughs> two, I'm, pretty, hey. I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to lie to you. So, look, everybody it, listening to this, we were a lot more pumped up about, what, 20 minutes ago <laughs> when we originally started recording this, and then I realized um, Rob's audio wasn't coming through, so... 17 minutes of great I probably, audio. I probably didn't say anything good. Uh, so we, we might have been able to go with the episode, just you talking, you know? Oh, man. We could have, like, ab-libbed or put somebody else talking in, in your spot there, telling yeah, me could, how. You know, really, you could have just uh, produced the, the show and shot it out, and then they could have, like, decided what the audio in between your audios was. It would have been great. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, it's a, it's a uh, Mad Libs. It's a Mad Libs podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I tell you, though, man, as a podcast content creator and a podcaster, it's so disappointing when you do stuff like that. It's like, oh, my God, how did I just um, – I saw the sound meter not moving, but it wasn't moving e- earlier for you. And then, But then I went back and played it back, and you were talking. So I was like, oh, we got to be good. But – now the sound meter for your audio is moving, so we are <laughs> we are good to go, and we are launched Sticky Side episode thirty eight season two. Here we go, man. Here we go. It's pretty cool, man. I, I, yeah. I can't really believe you know I can't believe that we ran through that many episodes last season, and you know we had our ups and our downs. We had our we had everything in between. We took a couple of breaks. Uh, I, but to me, I, I really feel like we had a pretty successful season. I think we uh, we had some pretty hot takes on some cool things. We had some really good interviews, some fun. We had some decent views on different players. So uh, I hope we can recreate a little bit of lightning this season. I hope it's a little bit more fun. We'll see. You know? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's life, man. Unless podcasting is a full-time job for you and you're getting paid – buku dollars to do it it's tough to fit it in your life you know what i'm saying especially when you're working a a job and then you have hobbies you like to do and if you've got like a significant other that you want to spend time with doing you know an episode a week two episodes a week sometimes man you just don't have time for it so there was a point last season where we were doing two a week you know at some points Whenever we could get a guest on and that was their availability, we were just snatching them up, you know. Um, but hopefully the Sticky Side Season 2, man, will um, will be a lot better than last season. We'll get some good players up here again like we did last year. And this season, I'm a regional director, so I'll be a lot more knowledgeable with the way the ACL functions and um, so on and so forth. Because uh, I just had a regional this past Saturday, and I'm going to tell you, it was a learning experience for me. Um, four courts, um, five divisions. Got there to set up at 8 a.m., put my head on the pillow at 1 a.m. Sunday morning. It was it was something else, man, something else. I mean, yeah, you told me you had a, a plenty of, of players, and when you have plenty of players, I like we talked about <laughs> as we were going through it last time, yeah. one of the things that I think is awesome that you learned is the fact that you know that you can't play now. You know that you've got to be the 100% director or – or 85% director, whatever you feel like, but you know, you can't, you can't have that 50% player because it just, it, it dwindles your game and it, it takes away from the event all at the same time, just because you want to play. Yeah. So it's cool that, that you learn that that quickly. And, uh, uh, I, I, I think you'll have a great time. I think you should let the cat out of the bag about how, how improved it's going to be next month though. Oh, yeah, I, I will. Um, I, I definitely will. Uh, but I, I'm going to tell you, I'm getting back to being a director and playing. I haven't lost two games in one tournament, 21-0, to zero, since I started out. And that happened to me Saturday. And I was playing wow. two really good players. I believe Travis Smith might be a pro. Um, if he's not a pro this year, he was a pro. But I, he might be a pro. Um, but he beat me 21-0. to zero. Then I played this guy, Danny Quinn, who's a great thrower, too, and he beat me 21-0. And I was like, man, this just – I can't do it. I can't – because you can't focus. You can't focus and worry about the brackets and, 
trying to get – you want to make sure all your players are happy, you know, and make right. sure that they're all on the boards when they can. There's, there's, always not, there's always a set of boards with somebody playing on them. Because the last thing – and you got to chase players. Even though they get these text notifications, they're not looking at them. Some of them aren't. Like Saturday night, for example, I'm trying to get intermediate going, and I send a text 15 minutes later. Nobody's at the boards. I look, he's over there talking to girls. So I had to go over there and get him. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, you know you got a text? No. Oh, sorry, man, sorry. You know, so you got to chase players down too, man. Um, just is what it is. And you also, um, yeah, I'll let the cat out the bag. Next month, November 5th, uh, Triangle Cornhole is uh, moving our regionals to Ready Roofing in Clayton, North Carolina. Um, there we're going to be able to accommodate nine sets of boards, and we're going to do a live stream and um, commentary. So – you know, we got a good thing starting over here, Rob. Hopefully I can continue with this and make it grow some. Well, you know, I, you're part of the best league in the world. And I, I'm not saying that to, to diminish any other league, but the the software that you have, the, the, the capability of all that software, uh, with all the different PPRs and all the different cool things that it does, Plus the notifications and the thing can really run itself if you put it on auto assign. You're 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 in a good place to make things happen. The league, mm-hmm. the league definitely helps you with its reputation to grow y- this sport in your area. And uh, touching on that, I'm going to send a shout out right now to um, Dusty Thompson. He's the Carolina commissioner. I'm going to tell you, man, um, that dude is A-OK in my book. He's always there to answer a question, always. I'm telling you, if you, like, text him, he gets back to you within, like, five minutes. You send him a message on Facebook, it's almost instant most of the time. And he's been nothing but 1,000% helpful. And um, I wouldn't have got through my, my regional Saturday also without Garrett Chapman's help. Um, he runs the local blind draws at the upper deck where we had the regional, and uh, he's real familiar with the – ACL software and he he got me going there so thanks Garrett and thanks Dusty you guys are freaking awesome and uh yeah but to touch on that software man it is awesome man the way what it does and the way the payout uh at the end I just man it 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 makes the job so much easier than when I was running Brackalope you know (laughs) back in 2015 (laughs) 16 you figuring know? out your own payout, even though yeah. there wasn't a lot of money for payout back then, but you were still figuring out your own payout. You were, yeah. you were, you know, hoping it was going to run right. You were making sure. Oh yeah. Well, it's I think unbelievable. I believe Brackalope did have a feature to break down the payouts. It was at like the yeah. very bottom. Yeah, but yeah, it, it did it did okay for you. You just had to. It, it was. It just still, it's nothing like what you're using now. Yeah. <laughs> And the digital wallet, I know a lot of people don't like to use digital currency because everybody's got conspiracy theories about, you know, they can get your bank account number or something like that, you know. But the digital wallet's the way to go. I mean, you don't have to touch any cash. You just click a couple of buttons, boom, the player's got their payouts, you know. Yeah, isn't that neat? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, fast, it's really cool. Man. You can be done. You could, you, I don't know if you were or not, but you can be done with the whole regional before you lay your head on the pillow, just like you said. Mm-hmm. So, and I, to me, that's that's awesome. That's I, I love, yeah. I love what Sean Zarkowitz does. That's the guy. That's the IT guy, you know, for for the ACL. He's the guy mm-hmm. that it, it's pretty much his baby. The entire software of this league is pretty much his baby. Is he started it back in uh, in Illinois, uh, where he lived, and him and Stacy hooked up a few years ago, and Sean just keeps on developing. So I I think it's amazing. We might yeah. need to get him in on get on get him on here one time just to talk about some stuff. Yeah, that sounds good, man. <laughs> get him up here and, and see how he created that genius software. Uh, and another thing, you know, I don't know, maybe the ACO's software has changed since I was one, but one thing I hated was every time I ran a regional, you had to manually input what place each player finished. And right. it's just so much easier now. Like it's like you said, all you have to do is literally, if you have walk-ups, put them into the tournament and then create the bracket, and then you can click start auto-assign, and boom. You can just run everything to the end in one one division. Um, yep. Pretty amazing, man. Pretty amazing. 
So, we have just come to the end of the 2021-22 season where we saw Mark Richards take away the, the singles championship and Jay Rubin and Jordan Powers take the doubles championship. Um, what's your thoughts, man, on the 2021-2022 season? It was incredible. I mean, it, to me, it, it's the cornhole is just getting more and more incredible. You know, you talk about there's there's just some things that might not that might not allow it to go mainstream just because of whatever but the the competition will not be one of the reasons i mean that that world's doubles final match was 20 to 2 richards and lopez they were winning and it, and it, they couldn't get that last point there was probably 14 maybe 14 rounds in the middle of that where both players both ends through 12s the entire 14 rounds for them to stay at you know stay washed at whatever mm -hmm. 20 or 12 and then jay and and jordan just kept climbing in they just stayed in it and just kept climbing back climbing back climbing back and it was incredible it was one of the most epic matches i've ever got to see in my life it's probably the most epic comeback in acl history Especially for a championship. For the world championship. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who would have thought they would come back from a 20-2 deficit at the pro level? You would think pro players, especially Mark Richards, who was on fire the whole weekend, you know, right. um, dominated I mean, he singles. Won, he won co-ed. He won singles. Yeah. He was in the doubles final. I mean, he, he was all over the place. It was, you're right, dominated singles. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, etched his name in as, you know, MVP, Rookie of the Year, whatever other accolade they gave him. But he he was amazing. He was amazing. He had a great year this year. And to think, you know, when we had him on our podcast, he said he'd been playing this game for, what, about a year and a half? And he learned it how? Watching YouTube videos? Are you kidding me? I mean, how do you get that consistent watching YouTube videos? He yeah. just, he, he's got a knack. He, he's, he's got a knack for mastering the repeatable swing very quickly. And he did it, and he's he just he's unbelievable. It's, well, it's fun to watch. If he's learning how to play cornhole using YouTube videos, then I need to talk to Mark again because I've watched several golf YouTube videos, and it hasn't helped my game at all. <laughs> so I need to find out what his secret is to um, take what he sees off YouTube into real life. Um, I, think, yeah. I think the intricacies of golf are maybe a little bit different than cornhole. You know, it's not just an arm swing. It's a whole <laughs> – maybe. Yeah. I don't know for sure, but – Keep watching. <laughs> now, man, I've been playing a lot of golf this year. I bet you I've played 16 rounds this year, which is most golf I've ever played in my life. And um, I think I'm taking a break now until next spring. I, no, you know what? I'm going out one more time. I got another um, scramble in November. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I definitely need to learn Mark's way of bringing YouTube University into your lap. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's the 2022-2023 season. They just had the uh, Open in Rock Hill. And, unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Um, had something. Some I actually bought the pre-registered for Sunday for advanced singles and couldn't make it and had to get a refund. But um, it looks like, man, that this Open was all about Jamie Graham. You know? It was. Jamie went out, and he showed why he's one of the best players in the world once again. A lot of people think he should have been the MVP, um, uh, and Mark Richards second to him. But, you know, Mark Richards got the nod and, and took it. But um, Jamie definitely had an argue for last season. He had all these uh, national wins, you know, some open wins. Um, he did have an open win, didn't he, I believe? Uh, I do believe. I, I don't have I don't the stats. but that closely, so I don't, it's yeah. funny that I don't follow it that closely, but I think that's when you're in it, you don't, you know. Yeah. You just, Try to try to try to make your own way, but yeah, I, Jamie had an incredible year, and I was standing there. I was I was, uh, I think it was at the Chicago Fourth of July National when he was talking about the MVP, and he had Trey Ryder. He and Trey Ryder were talking about it, and there was a couple other people that might have had a vote, and they were just talking. At that time, it was it came down to maybe Alex Rawls, Jamie Graham. And Mark Richards were the three that might have been in the, you know, in the the conversation, 
And it, that's a heck of a conversation when you're talking about Jamie Graham, Alex Rawls, and Mark Richards, and who to pick for MVP. And and if it's not sub, you know, if it's not subjective, if it's not something where it's it's picked by this, this, and this, you know, and it becomes something that's objective where I get to give you a vote, you know, that's crazy, you know. So a player, a player can be incredible. It's like the NFL is not. You know, the, the MVP for the NFL is not a given. You're not, it doesn't, you know, if you rush for 2,000 yards and 35 touchdowns, you're automatically going to be the MVP because Tom Brady can throw for 6,500 yards and 55 touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? So it's, yeah. it's much more objective. And I don't know if, if ours is objective that way, but it's just, mm-hmm. I think I'm using them right. <laughs> sounds good <laughs> so but yeah so i mean yeah jamie could have gotten the nod for sure yeah and, and he and he's proven and he, i think maybe he put him on a mission a little bit of a mission because i've seen him practicing a lot more um i know he's uh he's kind of gotten into the world of teaching so he, mm. he may be going out and teaching some people and and so he's always throwing a bag so he might be on a a mission this year to prove that he's still Jamie Grant. So that, that'll be that'll be nice to see because Jamie is one heck of a player when he's playing. Yeah, yeah, and um, he definitely showed it in Rock Hill at the Open. Um, he played Alex Rawls in the finals and came out on top. And we have uh, with Caden Allen third place, uh, Hunter Thorne, uh, Devin Harbaugh, Fisher Hamilton, Alex Hicks, uh, Noah Wooten, uh, and Trevor Brooks breaking the top ten in his first year as a pro. Uh, to, second to, 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 year. Second, second year. Second he was PDC year. last year, right? No, he he made oh. it into the pro division because a couple of people that they they got out of the pro division. So Trevor was uh, he was oh, elevated, pulled up. Okay, with, gotcha. Yeah, he played with Jay, uh, Jay Dot, all year long. You know, you're familiar with Jay Dotson, right? Yeah, yeah, I know old Jay. That was his that was his pro partner uh, this past year. But, yeah, Worlds. Uh, Jay saw me coming in and he um, was yelling my name and. I just kept walking because I just I didn't know he was <laughs> yelling. So I saw him later on that day, and he was like, "Man, Bird, I was trying to yell at you, and you just walked right on by me." I was like, "Well, that dude, okay, he don't want to talk." So he ended up buying me a beer later, and then spilt his all over the floor. Yeah, oh, man. it was great. <laughs> it was great. So in in doubles, uh, you know, Jamie Graham and Chad Hunt they took it down. Um, Jeremiah Hector, Garrett Wiggins finished second, and. Uh, Trey Birchfield and Alex Rawls got the third place finish on that one. Uh, let's move on. We got the Pro Advanced Blind Draw. Um, overall, Mr. Frank Modlin and Daryl Mills. Second place, Alec uh, Ryan and Kelly Karnovich. Uh, then Trey Birchfield and Aiden Claxton finishing third. And women's singles, Cheyenne Renner continues domination. Uh, Lori she, Duell. She had to come from the loser's bracket and double dip Lori. Wow. So she lost her first or her second game, and then uh, she went on a tear and came all the way back through and, and double dipped Lori for the action, for the win there. Yeah. So, yeah. And then Rosie, your favorite cornhole player, finished third. My favorite. And then you know? Samantha Finley with the fourth place finish. Now, I'm surprised at this one because I didn't know Frank. This must, Is this Frank's first year playing seniors? I believe it is. I was like, well, how did Frank become a senior already? But if- <laughs> – Damon's got to be – Damon Dennis has got to be pretty upset about that. Like, take your ass back down, Frank. Because <laughs> it looks like um Frank beat Damon in the uh, seniors' finals to take it down. And in the third place, Dewey Smith. So, there's uh there's your results from the Open in Rock Hill. Well, you know, so the, the division that you read off was the Open division in doubles. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're doing a little bit different this year with the Open division – being a division where the pros have to play. The pros can no longer play down in the advanced division at regionals and Mm -hmm. or anywhere. So now an advanced player can decide, do I want to play up with the pros or do I want to continue to be in the advanced level? There weren't very many, I I want to say there weren't, in, in the singles division, there weren't very many players that were advanced that played in the open division. So... Mm-hmm. To see that it was dominated by pros is the way that it, you know, it, it ended yeah. up being. So, but it, it that that's pretty cool the way they're doing that. They're not they're not forcing the pros down into advanced anymore. 
They're now saying, if you want to play with the pros, you need to step up, which is one of the coolest things, coolest additions this mm-hmm. year to the entire league, I think. I like the open division, actually. I think because at my regional, I ran the open singles and open doubles, and it was uh, a mixture of a couple of pros. We had Berkeley Pair there. Um, nice. Yeah, Berkeley came, um, and it was, you know, we had some intermediate guys. I think there was a couple that played in there. You know, they, they probably got smacked, but, you know, they got the experience. They got to play with some of the best players. You know, I really like the way that open division works, man. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Just like you said, they get to they, they get to walk up and they get to play the pros now. And you know, last year they they didn't get to; they had to play the pros. So mm-hmm. now you get to make that decision: Do you want to step up and do you want to be in that level? And and there will be people probably all year long that will only play that level that are advanced because they are trying to ascend to that level. So that's really the only way that you're going to do it. Uh, through the open standings, you know, beating the top 24 in open standings is if you play in the open division because there are more points in, you know, designated for the open division now that there weren't last year because it was all advanced. So it's it's going to be it's going to be neat. It's going to be a very competitive season, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And for Triangle Cornhole, which is the organization I run, man, we've got some really good players, man. Um, some of these guys, they were kids back in 2016 when I was ACO director, and they have just grown into beasts on the boards. And one of those, I'm going to send this guy a shout out. I'm going to talk about a few of my players, if you don't mind, Rob. Um, so our overall winner in the open singles is a guy named Brandon Tindall. Um, this guy could compete the way he was throwing Saturday. He could compete at the highest level in the ACL. Um, he was hardly missing and he was making all his shots. Now you look at his PPR. I think it was nine, nine, one or nine, two, something like that. Not too high, but man, to the people he beat, man, um, like he beat Travis Smith. Who's one of the best players in the area, uh, ACL pro, I believe. Um, and what Colby Shearer. Man, we had some some really good players. Um, so like first place Brandon and second Travis, third was Colby, fourth was a guy I hadn't seen play since he was like a teenager, Stephen Moore, and then Danny Quinn wow. and Eli Louder. Yeah. Um. So Stephen it was Moore. Who Stephen Moore? Yeah, that's a that's Ming that's Ming's son, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He came out. He's a really good player, man. Like some of these guys back when I was in the action before. They were average players. You know, when you played them, you know, okay, I'm probably going to beat this guy. Well, now right. they kept on playing, man. They kept on playing. They kept playing when you, when I took that time off. And now they're just phenomenal players. Um, so, in, in open doubles, Brandon Tindall won again. But, I mean, he had ACL Pro Berkeley pair. So, I mean, he was his chances of winning were really good on in doubles. Uh, former ACL Pro Draven Sneed. And Eli Lauder took second. Uh, Garrett Chapman and Travis Smith took third. Now, the competitive singles, I'm going to send a shout-out to these guys because these guys are triangle cornhole OGs from the day. Uh, Sammy Chalk and Joe Rohr, those guys were playing in my blind draws. So I used to play, uh, throw them at the upper deck. So shout-out to those guys showing that the OGs can keep it real. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and competitive doubles, we had um, Zachary Robinson and Joe Rohr again with the win. Tavares Evans and Maurice Smith, second. Sean McConnell and Melissa Sadler, uh, third. And let's just end it with the intermediate singles, Mr. Will Langdon, Garrett Barber, and Robert Schrantz. You know, just a shout-out to my Triangle Cornhole players right there. Um, You know, give them a little recognition. Thanks for coming out, you know. That's that's awesome. I mean, you got to do that, and that's what I think think that's what we're here for. I think we – I think last year we tried to be more of a national pro uh, broadcast. You know, we, we had a lot of pros on and things. But I really do think that the, the local uh, the local scene is important. Um, yeah. And, and I, I think it's good that you give them a shout-out. They deserve it. They're out there playing just as hard as anybody else. And, yeah. Well, it's important to our growth, too. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, word of mouth. You know, people will say, hey, you know, check out this podcast – pretty cool you know they send shout outs to their regions after um uh, other events i'm sure all the other cornhole podcasts they do it to their areas too you know i don't i really don't care what other cornhole podcasts do but um 
I can tell you that I don't know. That's the only. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know. <laughs> this is honestly the only cornhole podcast I even listen to. So, <laughs> and I only do that when I'm editing. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not ed- editing any more podcasts. So, every time <laughs> I say "uh," it's staying in the damn podcast. Uh, see, uh, that was real, not going. Right? Doesn't, yeah. Doesn't it make it real? I don't keeps know. it keeps it real, man. Keeps it real. Uh, so, what's your plans this year in the ACL? Uh, I was um, I was elected to the PDC because uh, I, I left it to the I left it to the application. I didn't play well enough in the uh, qualifier at Worlds, and I didn't go to my conference qualifier, so I left it to the application, which I don't recommend anybody doing, because that is a nail biting process. No matter what you think, no matter how you think you've performed in the past, or or what you think you should be once you leave it to the application process i feel like you're you're like you might as well be praying you know yeah <laughs> yeah they tell you to prayer to pray and your your prayers will be answered but not a lot you know you don't always know the answer you know the, the answer doesn't always match your perception of what the answer should be so i'm still a pro i'm in the pdc they still recognize them as pros which means my travel dates they're going to be a lot less strict i just have really i just have the five nationals that i need to go to to try to qualify for the main bracket mm-hmm. and then play pdc uh if if i don't make it to qualifying i haven't really made the decision they give us it they give us all the way to the first national to make the decision and i haven't really made the decision because i'm kind of trying to uh get my sponsorship money up first mm-hmm. to see if it'll be worth it uh, so I'm, I'm just, I'm in the middle of making a decision, but that's where they put me this year is on the PDC. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know how I feel about, um, well, like we talked earlier, like me playing, it's not going to probably happen. I don't think I'm playing in my regionals anymore. Cause it's just too, too tough to juggle, you know, organizing the event and trying to play, even though the ACL software is amazing and can run itself. Still, man, it's it's just real tough, man. Like I said, I got skunked twice in one tournament. But anyway, um, more power to the pros that can do all the traveling. I just don't see, even if I was a pro, how I could make all those expenses. And like, unless you're really sponsored, like big time. If you got a sponsor that's paying for all your flights and hotel expenses, then you're probably on ESPN all the time. You know, right. if you're on ESPN like once a year or twice a year as a pro, then I don't know if that justifies a big sponsorship. But then again, I'm not a big money sponsor. So <laughs> I just know I, I know a spot on somebody's jersey is around 20,000 in somewhere in that neighborhood for the, the top tier. It's definitely gone up over the past five years. The value has gone up a lot. They, they, used, to take, they used to take increments uh, of hundreds to get to a thousand because the pro fee used to be a thousand dollars. So they devalued themselves. They didn't have any idea what their value was, you know, pros that first got in and they were going to sell these sponsorships and Jersey spots. They had no idea. And, and, and now it's become something where the league has actually done some valuation stuff through, you know, a couple of different third party, you know, third, third party people. They've done some valuation of what that's really worth when you're on there, when you're on TV for minutes at a time or, you know, whatever it takes, a couple divisions, couple, a couple, couple episodes, however it goes. So they've, uh, that, that value has gone up a lot over the past five years. Wow. I'm scared to even find out what that is, man. <laughs> some of these people <laughs> literally have not even worked a job since, forever and they just went straight into making money with cornhole and good for them i hope they continue right. to live the dream and uh continue to make this sport grow you know and you saw that the top money winner this year was uh cheyenne renner did you know that yeah i believe i heard that but i don't remember off the top of my head how much it was she won well, she was just under a hundred thousand dollars but yeah i mean as a woman she definitely dominated just about everything um she didn't make it in women's doubles, um, but it was it was just, you know, she did just about everything. So she won everything she could when she played women's throughout the season. 
and that's what made that made that so nice <laughs> you know made that money winning yeah yeah so nice <laughs> Some, somewhere, like I said, somewhere short of $100,000. That's just prize money. That mm. doesn't even talk about sponsorship money and, and, you know, other. I don't know if they figured in regional money and conference money. I don't know mm. if they figured all that stuff in, too. I'm not positive. But uh, she was the top money winning pro. I'm Probably because it's it's probably linked in the ACL payout software. Because, you know, you have to put payouts inside the software. It's probably all linked together. You know, what, uh, which is impressive with the software. Um, there's only one thing I wish they would fix. Well, like when you're putting players in events, in tournaments, I wish it said beside their name what their skill level was. Like intermediate or competitive. Like, I don't know if you can accidentally put somebody in a competitive tournament and an intermediate tournament at the same time. You know, I can. I think, I think that you have the ability to do that. I'm not sure. I don't. They may gray out the divisions lower than them. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not positive. Uh, but you used to be able to do that. You used to be able to take an advanced player and put them in competitive. Mm-hmm. Just you know, by it would just allow that. But they may have. They may have taken that away. It would be nice if, right. if there was a way to stop PPR, that. Shows their PPR. Shows their PPR, but it mm-hmm. doesn't show you what, you know, which level they are. Which is important. I understand right. in regionals you can play down. You, I mean, you can play up, but you can't play down. Right. But, and this is a thing I had a hard time with trying to, to grasp. Like, if an intermediate player at a regional wanted to play competitive, he could. But could he also play in the intermediate tournament in that same regional? Well, so I would always run them almost at the same time, so you have to make that decision. Okay. The way I do mine, I stagger them. So mm-hmm. I won't let you, you – you'll have to make a decision. So if you wanted to play competitive singles, I mm-hmm. would also maybe run intermediate singles at the same time, or I would run the whatever doubles at the same time. So you had to absolutely make a decision one way or the other. Yeah. So you couldn't do both like that. You couldn't, you know. And if they run at the same time, I would always make them. You've got to make a decision right now because without a doubt, sooner or later – both of their mm-hmm. games are going to come up on the same, you know, in the same division, you know, in the opposite divisions. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to, oh, well, 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 Johnny said he'd wait for me. Well, Johnny doesn't have that choice. You either go play now or you forfeit. You know, if you're yeah. playing here, you might as well just forfeit there because, or forfeit here and walk over there and play that one, but you're done. You know, so I would always, I would always stagger it so that they couldn't necessarily play at the same time. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, I only had four courts, so I staggered yeah. these divisions out to approximations, what I thought they would end. I was off by most of all of them. So, um, <laughs> but I was able to let people play in intermediate and competitive because just, just for that reason. But right. when, at the new, at the next month's regional, I have enough courts where I'm going to stagger them to where they're going to have to make decisions. And I do wish more players would do the uh, uh, online registration. You know, <clears throat> I know you you're a big proponent of uh, paying in person. You know, you want everybody to pay online, so it's like, and I that's that's good. It's a lot easier because you don't have to handle cash too, and you don't have to worry about getting change. And like now, I have to take all this cash that I received at this regional and go put it in the bank and put it in my digital wallet. You know, it's. Uh, Online registration is the way to go, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know if you, I, maybe I made, maybe I didn't explain it well enough, but I like online registration. I mm-hmm. don't like walk-ups. Yeah. The I, only thing I like about walk-ups is that I can charge them much more money because you should have, uh, you should have registered online. If you knew you were coming, yeah, I, I leave my registration open all the way till mm-hmm. midnight of the day before, you know, so. <clears throat> I, or all the way to the day of the regional, you know, that's the way I used to leave mine open. Yeah. So you can register if you know you're coming. You knew you were coming yesterday. You should have gone on and registered. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to cost you $10 per division more. Whoa. Whoa. You're Whoa. brutal. Whoa. 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 Well, what do you mean? It's yeah. way more convenient for both of us. Oh, yeah. I don't like to use the wallet. Okay, well, give me your cash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're, I mean, you're expensive. I only did $5. I did a $5 yeah. admin fee. <laughs> you know, and 
everybody paid it. You know, some people look like deer in the headlights, but now I explained it to them. They're like, oh, okay, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, man. I mean, um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You got to earn your money somehow, man. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy earning money just through the, the registrations. You know, you got you, you to gotta be able to make it somehow. And I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of work. It's a, people <laughs> sit back and probably think, and I knew this back when I was ACO director, man, it's a ton of work. And back then we didn't have all this software that did everything for you. It was all manual. And you still had people bitching about, oh, how much is he keeping? How, why aren't we getting paid out this and that? Yep, you know, yep. this was my rule coming into this. I said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to pay out 75% in each division and I keep 25%. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't hear anyone bitch about payouts, you know, at, you know, at the region. I would, I would challenge you not to do that. I would challenge you to stick to the league's payouts. And why? Because now a guy who's in a competitive division making 75%, right, is going to stay there. He has no reason to move to the advanced division until you move him. No but He's going to stay there and sandbag. Yeah. And get to his 75%. But his 75% isn't even close to what the 75 is in the open division. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example. Well, there was only eight more players. There was well, only eight more players from, from competitive. Competitive yeah. singles, you said you had 19. Open singles, you had 27. Yeah. There's only eight more players. So, the truth is, it was pretty close. Yeah. Well, you know, and Dusty told me the same thing, um, Dusty Thompson, the Carolina Commissioner, because I told him I, I paid out the intermediate division three spots. But 75% in that, like first place only won $50, compared to first place in open, which was 350 So, I mean, right, right. it's a big difference. You know, so right, if you right. want to continue yeah. just making 50 bucks, you know, I mean, don't get any better. Sandbag in the uh, intermediate division. But, and they do, and, and and they will. There are those OGs that don't care to get any better. So what does the? Do, but they do like finishing third or second. So you what's, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what what's the payouts uh, standards the recommended for? Recommended structure is seventy for advanced, sixty for competitive, and fifty for intermediate. Oh, uh, okay. So maybe I will change that then, if that's the ACL standards. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, Rob. I think we, yeah. I, hey, man, this has been a, a great episode, man. Um, season two starting out strong. Chiz, Mark, and Bird are back, and um, we're going to be here all season. And we hope to have some great uh, players on, and who knows, maybe other people. Like last season, we had what Sean Latham was on, and you know, you know, we had a couple more people. We had uh, Matt Dodge he started his own podcast. Oh, did he? Well, he, yeah, he's he's, he's Mister. Oh yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, Noah's doing the podcast. I wonder if he's doing yeah. it from the car. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to right. It's, it's right. Gonna be good if he doesn't. Yeah. Well, well, Rob, good seeing you, man. And um, we'll see you next time on the sticky side. You be good out there where you're at, man. And um, hey, man, throw them straight. We'll see you. I like it. All right, this is Mike. That's Rob. This is Sticky Side. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, like, subscribe to us on the Naughty Donkey Channel on YouTube. And wherever you get your podcast, subscribe and like because me and Rob can't, you know, get in your headphones or your AirPods without you subscribing to us weekly. Check us out. Peace.